I'm going to start a five gallon batch of some easy to make white wine today. I'm going to use Welch's white grape juice concentrate. It's made from Niagara grapes and it makes a nice semi-sweet to sweet white wine. It's really easy to make since I don't have to deal with any fruit. Plus I can make it anytime I feel like instead of just when the fruit's ready. So what I need is 10 of these to ferment. And I need one more when it's bottling time. I'll ferment 10 cans and add one at bottling time. Add some flavor, some sweetness to the wine. But I need a few other ingredients too. I need some of this acid blend. Adds a little tartness. I only use one tablespoon of acid blend. You can use more if you like a more fruity, tarty flavored wine. I don't really care for it that much. And I need pectic powder, half a teaspoon per gallon. So I'll be putting in two and a half teaspoons since I'm making five gallons. I also need some yeast nutrient. That'll be five teaspoons of that, one teaspoon per gallon. And uh, since Niagara and similar grapes don't have quite enough sugar to really make a good strong wine, you have to add sugar. So I'm going to add six and one half pounds of sugar to my ten uh, cans of concentrate. And that should give me a starting gravity of around... 13% potential alcohol. That's the goal. So the process basically involves just opening up all these cans, dumping them into my fermenter bucket I have here. You should have at least a six and a half gallon fermenter. This one's actually seven and a half gallon. It's bigger than what I need. But I'm gonna try to fill it up to just a little over five gallons. Because after the primary fermentation is done, at, uh, I'm going to end up with about five gallons that I'm going to rack off into a big carboy. So what I'll do is uh, have primary fermentation. It'll probably take a week, maybe two, it just depends. And then it'll be racked off into a glass carboy for about a month or so. And then I'll be able to bottle it. It's a lot easier to make this wine from concentrate than it is using grapes. You don't have to rack it as many times. There's no fruit to crush. When it's time to bottle, I'm going to add some potassium sorbate and some sulfites in the form of Campton tablets. And uh, some more sugar. Uh, Niagara is usually a semi-sweet, sweet wine. So that'll be at bottling time. I'm not going to add any sulfites at the beginning of fermentation because this stuff already has sulfites in it. It has uh, potassium metabisulfite. And in fact, after I get this all put in the fermenter, I've got to let it sit for at least 12 hours, probably about a day, to let the sulfites dissipate out of the grape juice concentrate and then I'll put my yeast in tomorrow so that's the other ingredient I don't have out here and it's always good to have a couple packs of yeast in case you have problems you have a backup but I'm going to use a, a yeast made for white wine actually but I'll get that out tomorrow when I put it in so I've got to get my concentrate added to my bucket I like to dissolve my sugar in some warm water. That way it's all dissolved really well. I can get a good gravity reading with my hydrometer here. Although my sugar is well dissolved. So I've got to get my uh, grape juice open, thrown in the bucket, and get my sugar dissolved in some water. I use scales to weigh out my sugar. I need right around six and a half pounds. If you don't have scales, throw in a four pound bag and a little over half maybe of another four pound bag and you should be close six and a half pounds. 
So, I guess I better get started. There's 10 empty cans of white grape juice concentrate. Here's some sugar I've gotten dissolved in some warm water. I do that in the microwave. I also use filtered water. You can get out of the refrigerator or just some kind of carbon filter to remove chlorine. <clears throat> I don't like to have much chlorine in anything I ferment. So that's part of my sugar. I still have a, quite a bit to dissolve yet. Here's what the tin cans of concentrate look like along with some of the water I used to rinse the, the cans out with. I've also put all the uh, yeast nutrient, pectic powder, and acid blend is all in there. So I'm going to pour some of this. And then I need to get some more sugar dissolved. Then add the water, whatever it takes to get up to that 5 gallon plus level that I'm looking for. Oh, I should mention that I used uh, sulfite solutions to sanitize all my equipment. My fermenter and lid and my stir and hydrometer. Uh, you can crush a couple Campton tablets in a gallon or two of water or use a, like an eighth, a quarter teaspoon of uh, metabisulfite powder in a gallon or two of water and rinse everything really well. And that should get it all sanitized and ready. Looks like I've made a mess here. I better clean that up or I'm going to have a sticky floor. One of the hazards of winemaking. I have my five gallons of volume. And I stirred up the must here. And I'm trying to get a good gravity reading. It's a little foamy. It's a little hard to read. The best I can tell, it's about 1.102. So I'm going to go with that, which is approximately the foam off of it so I can see it about 13% or more potential alcohol. had my hydrometer sanitized earlier so I didn't have any problem just sticking in the bucket. So now all I'm going to do is loosely cover it with this lid. It's been sanitized. It's got sulfite solution all over it. Which is a good thing. So I'm just going to lay it on there and just lay this little piece of paper towel over it just keep the bugs out of it and that will allow any of the sulfite gases to dissipate and sometime tomorrow I'll be putting the yeast in the grape juice has been sitting here for about 24 hours now so I better get some yeast in it should be plenty of time for the sulfites to have dissipated. Some recipes say 12 hours is long enough, but uh, I've had trouble starting yeast in it just 12 hours. But uh, I sure don't want to go more than 24. I don't want to get something growing in there that I don't want. So I best get my yeast hydrated. I've got some 100, 105 degree water maybe. This particular yeast likes to be rehydrated in warm water. It's a QA23 Laubin. It's for white wines. And you're supposed to rehydrate in warm water for 15 minutes. So I'm going to pour this in my warm water here and let it sit for 15 minutes. Then stir it up and uh, toss it into the grape juice. The yeast has been in the warm water for a little over 15 minutes. It's fully rehydrated. You can use any kind of wine yeast or champagne yeast. 
I've also made it with this EC1118. It's pretty good. It's a champagne yeast. It's good to have a few packs of that for backup in case you have problems or something. If your first yeast doesn't take and throw something like that in. So I've got this fairly well agitated, stirred up. And I'm just going to pour it in down here. And uh, I might stir that a little bit and put the lid on it. I'll get that yeast stirred up really well. The lid snapped on and the airlock's attached with a small amount of water in it. So I hope to have some bubbles by tomorrow. I'll check back then. It's been 18 hours since the yeast was put in. Quite a few bubbles coming through the airlock. It's a good sign of a vigorous fermentation. All I need to do now is uh, sit this bucket out of the way somewhere and let it do its thing. Check on it every day and uh, see when the bubbles stop. It's been 15 days since the yeast was put in. The bubbles have finally stopped. And primary fermentation is well done. I've got my sanitized hydrometer floating around in here. And it's actually sunk all the way down to 0 0.990. It really doesn't go any lower than that. So I need to calculate my final alcohol content. And take the starting gravity, which is 1.102. Subtract 0 0.990. That gives me a number that I multiply times 129, which is just a constant number. That gives us the approximate alcohol by volume of 14.4%. So that's fairly strong. If you don't like your wine that strong, you could probably use a little less sugar. So, now I need to rack this stuff. I've got one crushed Campton tablet that I'm going to add. This helps to uh, keep the wine preserved and reduce some of the damage from oxidation. I'm using my trusty old glass carboy. It's five gallon. And I'm going to use this racking cane of stainless steel which they sell lots of plastic ones but I broke every plastic one I ever had good stainless steel racking cane is worth its weight in gold as they say and some tubing so I'm just gonna get my siphon started what I do is fill my racking cane and my tubing with water and shove the cane down into the line up here and the tubing down in the carboy and it should start siphoning. I've sanitized my carboy with some sulfide solution along with my other equipment and a stopper and an airlock. So I'll get my uh, siphon started. Got my tubing and my cane full of water tubing down low and shove the cane in the top and let it go. See what happens. So far so good. Try to minimize splashing as much as possible. Well, that'll settle out. 
you know, minimum amount of splashing as little oxygen as possible levels going down the idea is to get as much liquid as possible and leave as much yeast and other sediment behind these are non skid hot pad it's silicone rubber that way I can tilt the bucket when I get close to the end and I have it go flying off the counter It's slightly cloudy. That's from a little bit of yeast I picked up. That'll settle out in about a month. I'll take this carboy and then rack it into another carboy. Let it sit for about a month and then it should be bottling time. So I'm going to watch this bucket and finish getting it out of there. The carboy has been filled. So I'll need to find a place to sit this for about a month. Try to keep it reasonably cool. Probably be in about the low 70s where it's going to sit. My fermentation temperature was around 75 and here's the uh, yeast that was left in the bottom it's a little bit a little clear liquid on top I might be able to pour that off and get a little sample nothing left to do but clean up the mess and uh, carry this big heavy carboy off make some nice plastic ones nowadays I have a couple of plastic ones I use a glass one if it's empty though nothing quite like glass dangerous heavy but impervious to all sorts of smells and odors and gases so I guess that's it for now check back in about a month here's the sample I got after the primary fermentation of course it's still a little cloudy and it has a rather strong alcohol component the fermentation appears to be progressing normally Got a little bite from the yeast floating around in it this will be really good here in about a month or two The wine's been in the carboy for one month now. It's gotten really nice and clear. I'm going to rack it one more time. Get it off that sediment. And I have a plastic carboy. It's made for wine and beer. I sanitize it. Along with my other equipment. My rack and cane tubing. And a big stopper and airlock takes a different size stopper than the glass carboy I have one crushed Campton tablet I'm going to put in the carboy before I siphon the wine into it the uh, temptation to bottle is great because it's very clear looking and it might actually be okay to bottle at this point I suspect there will be some fine sediment in the bottles I've always racked this twice in the past before bottling and my wine bottles have stayed completely clear so I'm just going to keep doing that if you don't mind a little sediment it could be bottled but I want really nice clear wine especially a light colored wine so I'm going to get my siphoned system initiated load up my racking can and tubing with some water and start siphoning this in to the new clean carboy I also have a non skid rubber pad here so I can tilt my carboy without sliding off the counter so 
So I better get started. The siphon has begun. I added the crushed camping tablet. And I'm letting it fill with wine. So I'll get this filled up, make sure it's topped off, put my stopper and airlock on it. There's the completed racking. So I'm going to sit this carboy off for one more month. Then the next time, it'll be going into bottles. Quite a bit of sediment left behind. Even got a small sample to taste out of the hose. And at this point, Niagara wine does not taste that great. It's good stuff once you get it sweetened up a little bit. Dry Niagara is really grapey, tart, and this batch has quite a bit of alcohol. So that's one of the reasons Niagara is usually a sweet, or at least a semi-sweet wine. So when this is bottled, it'll get a nice addition of uh, sugar. But for now, it's just got to sit for another month. Another month has gone by. Now I have five gallons of brilliantly clear wine to bottle. So I've been busy here for a while. I've got my bottles lined up, sanitized along with my equipment, sanitized with some sulfite solution and my bottling bucket sanitized and ready. I also have five crushed Campton tablets and two and one half teaspoons of potassium sorbate. I'm using that along with the sulfites because I'm going to sweeten this wine and I don't want it fermenting in the bottle. What I'm going to sweeten it with is one can of white grape juice concentrate. Here I have four cups of sugar dissolved in two cups of water I heated and stirred until it's completely dissolved. And I also have my corks floating here in some sulfite solution. So what I'm going to do is pour in my four cups of dissolved sugar, my two and a half teaspoons of sorbates, my five crushed Campton tablets, and the can of juice concentrate. I'm going to pour all that into the bucket and then siphon this and try to leave behind any sediment. I don't see too much in there. Siphon that into the bucket on top of all those other ingredients so they'll get blended together well. And then I'll work on filling bottles. I have my siphon started and I'm very carefully racking this wine. I don't want to pick up anything and I'll be able to tilt it since I have my nice rubbery pad there without having it go flying off the countertop. I'll need to taste it before I bottle it, see if I've sweetened it enough. Now's the fun part wine tasting. I scooped out a sample just to try it out. I want to make sure it's sweetened about the way I want it. That's pretty good. I don't think I'd want to sweeten it much more than that. Four cups was just my best guess. In the past that's about what I've used. There's no set rule on how much sugar you can put in. Since there's sulfites and sorbates in there, it won't ferment anymore, so you can put as little or as much 
sugars you like. Four cups is about right for me. Uh, the first time you make any kind of wine, though, it's probably best to start out small amounts. Like maybe start with two cups dissolved in a cup of water. And then just add a cup of sugar, taste, add more if you like, until you get to what you like. That's one of the good things about making your own wine. You can make it the way you want it. And four cups of sugar and five gallons makes it about the sweetness I like. That along with that extra can of uh, juice concentrate I put in. That really kicks up the flavor a little bit. It's a good idea to do that. I've done it without adding that, and it's just not quite as tasty. So I've got plenty of corks here in my corker. I'm going to fill up the bottles. I've got a nice handy bottle filler here on the end. It works when it's full liquid, it shuts off. When you push on the tip, it lets the wine out and into the bottles. So I've got to do some bottle filling. The bottles are all filled. Time to insert corks. The bottles are all filled and corked. Ended up with 24 bottles, equivalent to 27 fifths, since I used some double fifth size bottles. It's a real nice bright color. The great thing about Niagara white wine is that it doesn't need to age. It's drinkable right now. In fact, it's probably better if it's drank before it gets very old. I've drank it as old as two years, but it, uh, it starts to lose a little flavor after about a year. So it's meant to be shared, great on a hot summer day. And if uh, five gallons is a lot, it can be scaled down. The recipe is easily scalable down to it's two cans of concentrate and one and a quarter pounds of sugar per gallon. The only thing left for me to do now is print some labels. I use removable stickers so I can peel them easily and reuse the bottles. Well, it's been fun. Thanks for watching.